Today what I'd like to do is go over the Oasis discography and give you my personal opinion on each album as well as some of the DVDs. I uh, have been a huge fan of the band Oasis from Manchester, England for about seven, eight years now and um, I'm doing this in anticipation of their new album coming out called Dig Your Own Soul which comes out in October. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, the band formed in 1991. They were called The Rain. Brother, J Brother Noel Gallagher joined and uh, demanded that the Hia write all the songs and uh, they changed their name to Oasis. 1994, the world saw the debut album, definitely, maybe. Uh, one of my personal favorite rock and roll albums of all time. Uh, it has classic hits on here like Rock and Roll Star, Live Forever, Supersonic, you know, Cigarettes and Alcohol, you can't go wrong. If you don't own it, I don't know what's wrong with you. You really can't claim to be a rock and roll fan if you don't own it. Uh, I think it sold something like 30 million. I'm not absolutely sure, but it's a lot. Great album. Uh, Live Forever is like one of my favorite songs of all time. Uh, definitely, maybe, is a definite. In uh, 1995, uh, they released the album as a follow up, and uh, this is the album that most people know by them. Um, it's Morning. What's the story? Morning Glory contains the hits uh, Wonder Wall. Don't Look Back in Anger, as well as Champagne Supernova, but I actually like some of the other songs better than some of the hits. Uh, first off, I'd say Roll With It, although I think that was a single. It's great. Hello is awesome. Some might say that was a hit in the UK, but not here. Uh, thing is, Americans, most Americans don't know the band's still going. Uh, I'm really kind of a, uh, <laughs> on a desert island, if you will, sort of an oasis. Um, as far as, you know, they're not very popular here. I mean, I go see them every couple years in Atlanta, and you know, there's, there's a sizable amount of people there, but most Americans don't give a shit. You know, they're all about, you know, what's here and now, and what the fuck's pushed on radio here, and all that fucking Nickelback. Anyway, definitely, anyway, what's the story Morning Glory? Second album, great. Um, production's a little off though, it's just, it sounds a little uh, muddy, I don't know. Well, my, my personal favorite off here is uh, the title track, Morning Glory. Great song. That was also a single, too. Anyway, this is their hugest album. Probably heard of it. If you haven't, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, so, two years go by, and 1997, we see the release of Be Here Now. This album is uh, most of the time when you hear Noel or Liam talk about it. Liam doesn't really care, but Noel mainly hates this album. This is the reason they don't really play anything from this album live is he was heavily on coke and uh, a lot of the songs are really repetitive and just fucking rock and roll excess like 20 guitars on a track and just solos everywhere you look but uh, I still like it. Um, the first single uh, Do You Know What I Mean is a bit long and it's kind of a Stone Roses ripoff but it's still pretty good. Uh, my favorite track is track number two My Big Mouth uh, just fucking, you turn that thing on like 10, your car stereo, you'll be rocking. Or, you know. But um, this is a great album. Uh, Stand By Me. Oh, there's another great song by that, that title. It's also a good song. Uh, Don't Go Away is a great ballad. Um, the Girl in the Dirty Shirt's a bit ridiculous, but it's still good. I mean, they, they go on. A lot of the shit on here is really Beatles influenced, which is okay. But, you know, my personal opinion, they're better than the Beatles. So, oh God crucify me right now, but that's just my personal opinion. Although I will admit, they do borrow a lot from them. Uh, and It's Getting Better Man, that's a great song. Um, but, oh, you know, I even like the All Around the World reprise, which is great. And All Around the World, oh, it's a bit much, but it's still good. So, uh, this one's a huge seller too. Moving on to 1998, there was a B-Sides collection released called The Master Plan. Now, the funny thing about Oasis is they actually released some better songs, I feel, in their singles than they're actually on some of the albums. It's kind of weird, especially here in the current decade. Some of the songs they've had on B-sides are far superior to songs on albums. We'll get to that later. But anyway, the Master Plan uh, has a song here called Acquiesce, really good song. Uh, it's actually, I think, the first documented uh, duet with the Brothers Gallagher. And, uh, you know, it's got a lot of good songs, Up in the Sky. You never really hear tracks from these live, but uh, right now the song you're hearing, Swamp Song, off here. And uh, it's good to be free, uh, half the world away, stay young. 
I really like the uh, Going Nowhere. I can really relate to that one a lot, being a musician. But uh, it's still great. I mean, you can probably find it in the $2 bin at your local record store master plan. Check it out. It's great. Moving on to the year 2000. At this point, they had lost a rhythm guitar player and a bass player. And, um, you know, after the first album, they switched drummers, if you know anything about the band. Most people know that. Anyway, in the year 2000, we saw the ambitious experimental Standing on the Shoulders of Giants. This album is uh, it's a little different. I mean, they try a little different, you know, sounds and song structures, a little psychedelic going on, a little psychedelics going on, but it's still good. Um, I can still listen to it, uh, even today. Um, title track, or the intro track, if you will, Fucking in the Bushes, is basically their intro music if you go see them since this album, which is cool. Um, the first single was Go Let It Out, it was aight. Uh, Who Feels Love, I like that one a lot. Um, Gas Panic's a really good psychedelic track, uh, if you're into that. And, uh, like Roll It Over, that's a really good closer. I, when I first got into Oasis, I listened to this one a whole lot. And, uh, I haven't listened listen to it so much here lately, but it's, uh, it's still good. Standing on the Shoulders of Giants. Really, uh, overlooked album. But, um, you know, you gotta take your hat off to them for trying different things. And, uh, yeah. Check it out. So, two years go by, and I'm fully fucking enthralled in, you know, Oasis fandom. I mean, I've got the magazines from the UK. They've had, you know, collections of articles and stuff. I've got all that. Some posters. Can't see one over there. Got a cigarettes and alcohol poster. But, uh, okay, and at the height, you know, I would say the height of my fandom. I'm still, I still love them, but it's not like, I mean, I was borderline totally obsessed. Anyway, in 02 they released Heathen Chemistry. This album is, uh, it's one of their better ones from this decade, in my opinion, so far. I mean, um, it's like real solid songs. This one also introduces, uh, well, actually the last album did, but this is the first single from uh, Liam Gallagher, uh, Songbird, which is a real simple two chord song. It's alright. But uh, the first track I like a lot, a lot, Hindu Times is good. Force of Nature has kind of got an Iggy Pop glam feel to it. Um, Hung in a Bad Place is great. I was actually on some commercial I saw and I was like, what the hell? Anyway, uh, Stop Crying Your Heart Out. That, I remember when I went to see him for the first time in Atlanta in 02, I heard them playing that song on the sound check, and I was like so excited. It was a really great show if you were there. It was like August of 02 at the Tabernacle. Great show. Um, but yeah, uh, Little by Little, it's a great song. I mean, it's kind of a stock, you know, sing-along thing, no to write, but it's still good. Um, but yeah, Heathen Chemistry. And three years passed by, summer 2005, we saw the release of Don't Believe the Truth. This album uh, came off strong with a really good single called Lila. It's got the real cool pound and glam beat, as I call it. And uh, it's got a few good songs. This one's not really one of my favorites, to be honest, though. Uh, I really like the intro track, Turn Up the Sun. Lila's good. Um, Mending a Soul is horrible. I don't like that song. Um... A bell will ring's good. Let there be love's good. But our, let, let there be love was old. It was a, it was a B-side anyway, or something that didn't quite happen. But I, I got off some download or something. But um, this album's all right. Uh, it's got a pretty interesting DVD with it, and um, it's all right. A lot of people liked it. I, I was kind of weird about it. I was like, guys, eh, I, I still went to the tour, of course. And if you go see Oasis, you know it's, it's basically it's all about the new album, and uh, they play a few. You know, about eight great sets, pretty much, mixed in with about five tracks from the new album, roughly. And, uh, I don't know, it's alright. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just out of bragging, I guess, I found the CD a while back when I was at Circuit City once, and it's actually, it's kind of a, a nerdy thing to have, but, uh, it's the, uh, Royal Phil Philharmonic's Tribute to Oasis. Um... Really good uh, version of Live Forever. It's just basically, you know, instrumental orchestral versions of their songs. And it, when I listen to it, it's like, man, this is cool, but this, it makes me really want to listen to the real song more. Um, you know, Up in the Sky was really good. Uh, you know, it's, it is, you know, you've probably seen one of these for like Metallica or something. They tribute 